Hey everybody, it's Andy aka Max Ryder. We are back with another unboxing video. This one's coming from HBP Citrus Heights in Citrus Heights, California. I don't know what HPB exactly stands for. This is a pretty shoddy packaging job. It's just plastic around a book. So hopefully, half price books, that's HHPB. Uh, Ooh, they really crammed it in here. Holy crap. Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos. HP Lovecraft and diverse hands. So, wow, let me see how this smells. Ugh. That's got a weird smell. Hmm. I don't know, I can't tell if it's just old book smell. I think it's kind of a, it's actually kind of a, um, it's kind of a smoky smell. I don't like that. I don't know. So, let's take a look at the book jacket. I can't believe the jacket's with it. Yeah, this is um, this is an Arkham House book. Uh, that's why I bought it. I paid a little bit more rather than getting it 1990, 1990, from 1990, 30 years ago. So, let's see what we got. The late H.P. Lovecraft was a myth maker, a visionary, a conjurer of dream. As a self-professed outsider in his own century, Lovecraft invested his inner visions with such intensity that he was able to will an entire world into being. Great Cthulhu... Uh, the blind, idiot god Azathoth, the sea sunken realm of Riele, the infamous Necronomicon, mythic deities and alien landscapes emanated in eldritch array like a litany of maledictions from the pulp magazines of the era that published his fictions. Uh, fiction. Lovecraft's unique contribution to the art of the imaginary cosmology lies in his attitude towards wondrous phenomena. No longer could such quaint, outmoded figures of European folklore as the ghost, the vampire, or the werewolf serve as a source material for the modern tale of terror. Lovecraft instead established his stories within the within the Einsteinian science of his age and then affected fanciful ex a fanciful extension of finite natural law, soaring with his readers to a dazzling cosmic vision beyond known space and conjectured time. There must always be, he explains in a 1930 letter, a sense of soaring outward from all temporal, spatial, and material limitations towards the discovery of stupendous cosmic, inconceivable things. By elaborating his mythos as an extension rather than a negation of reality, Lovecraft emancipated the weird tale from its archaic conventions and incidentally conceived the science, science fantasy cosmo, cosmogony that survives him. Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos is a celebration of Lovecraft's achievements, a tribute a tribute to his most influential of 20th century American fantasists by such members of the original Lovecraft circle as Robert E. Howard, Robert Block, and Fritz Lieber, and by such present-day masters as Ramsey Campbell, Joanna Roos, and Stephen King. The stories in this anthology are thus intended as superior uh, mythopoic entertainments and as a collective testimony to the darkly enduring power of the strange Rhode Island recluse, the man with his cosmic mind. Jacket by Jeffrey K. Potter. 50 years of Arkham House. Arkham House. Um, I was profoundly shocked and grieved today to learn a letter from Howard Wandry that H.P. Lovecraft had died. This was by chance on the way to the marshes, and I carried H.P.L. with me hour after hour, sharing with the, mem sharing with the memory of him this Wisconsin landscape he will never know. In writing the above journal entry on 18 March 1937, August Ehrlich could scarcely have realized that he would soon become involved with an institution that, not unlike Lovecraft himself, has become a legend. On this fateful day, fateful day in 1937, Ehrlich sat for hours on a railroad trestle beside a brook, pondering how to the best stories by his great friend might be permanently preserved between cloth covers. That evening, he wrote to Howard Wandry's brother, uh, Donald, with his proposal. And over the next two years, Derleth and Wandry submitted a selection of Lovecraft's work to Scribner's, Simon & Schuster, and other New York imprints. After repeated rejections, the two men decided to publish the book, by the book themselves at great personal sacrifice. And in late 1939, they received 1,268 copies of a certain volume entitled The Outsider and Others. I have a copy of that. Maybe? No, no, out of the shuttered room. Founded to preserve the collected writings of H.P. Lovecraft, Arkham House soon began to publish fantastic literature of all kinds, from the crumbling pulp pages of Weird Tales magazine to such eminent British supernaturalists as Algernon Blackwood and H.P. Hartley. At the time of Daryl's death in 1971, Arkham House had become the oldest and most renowned fantasy imprint in the world. Daryl's successor, James Turner, has further broadened the publishing program to include such authors as J.G. Ballard, Lucius Shepard, and 
James Tripchie Jr. In a recent assessment of the Turner era of Arkham House, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch has written, Durlith's efforts to keep alive the Lovecraft School of Horror was obviously important, but the writers that Arkham House is publishing today are argu arguably much more skilled than their predecessors, and the firm's contribution to the spec speculative literature has never been greater. So, I paid, I think, 20 bucks for this, plus shipping. Um, and... I can't tell if that's a smoky smell or just a weird smell. Let's see if it's on the outside. It's on the outside, so I can put this on the shelf with the other books, and hopefully over time the smell will go away. There's the Arkham House print. I really love these books. Their size. Uh, I love how nice they are. So we got Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft, The Return of the Sorcerer by Clark Ashton Smith, Ubo Sathla by Clark Ashton Smith, The Black Stone by Robert E. Howard, The Hounds of Tindalos by Frank Belknap Long. I don't think I've ever read that. The Space Eaters by Long, The Dweller in Darkness and Beyond the Threshold by August Derelith, The Shambler from the Stars by Robert Block, The Haunter of the Dark by H.P. Lovecraft, The Shadow from the Steeple by Robert Block, Notebook Found in a Deserted House, Robert Block, The Salem Horror, Henry Cutner. I don't think I've ever read that. The Terror from the Depths by Fritz Lieber, Rising with Surtsey by Brian Lumley, Cold Print by Ramsey Campbell, The Return of the Loiger by Colin Wilson, My Boat by Joanna Roos, or Russ, Styx by Carl Edward Wagner, The Freshman by Philip Jose Farmer, Jerusalem's Lot by Stephen King, that is an awesome story, and Discovery of the Gurek Zone by Richard A. Lupoff. You know, I bought this for one of these stories specifically, and now I can't remember which one. But that's okay. Um, this is a beautiful book. And I will have to just figure out which one of these stories I wanted to, I had an interest in. I mean, I have an interest in all. They're really good. Yeah, you can, you can smell it. We'll have to put this separate from the other books, Rob. But there it is. There's Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos by Arkham House. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, I appreciate it. And I will talk to y'all next time.